Coach. Coach, uh, the decision to defer really appeared to pay off pretty, pretty handsomely for the uh, get a turnover and then you come back in the second half and have a chance to kind of get some separation. What was your thought process behind that decision? Well, I just figured that uh, you know, that's what they were going to do anyway. So then there, if we wanted, then we could assure, you know, we knew what we were going to have, you know, type of deal. Nothing really, just, I mean, because to be honest with you, I don't think it matters a great deal. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I knew it would be a tough game. I knew it would be a hot game, and it always is here. Um, you know, I get a kick out of it. Some places in the traditional uh, SEC think they're hot, but Texas a and is real hot. And, um, and uh, you know, and so I just figured it would be good to get the ball the second half. Talked a lot about focus and confidence last game. I mean, did, did you feel like your team, an inexperienced team in this environment, really stepped up this week? Uh, we took a step. I thought uh, we got a ways to go, but we took a step. Was that Will Rogers' best performance this season? Yeah, probably. What, what made it so successful tonight? Uh, I think the guys around him, I thought they protected him pretty good. I see they have him down for three sacks. We only gave up two. One of them should have never happened, but um, uh, but I thought we protected him pretty good. I, and I thought uh, you know receivers got better at making plays. Uh, what do you think that Will just in his own right specifically needs to improve on moving forward? I think just continue to elevate and adjust to the players around him and what they're going to do, which is tough because it's a moving target. And I think he did a better job of you know mastering some things as far as being aware of the backside, being aware of their leverage, being aware of their numbers, and not forcing uh, plays into bad looks, you know, type of thing. How big was it for you guys to come in here on the road and get a win over a good ranked opponent? Oh, that's good. I mean, it's always good. Heck, it's always good to win in Kyle Field, and I've I've done it more than most people have. So it's uh it's it's awesome to win in Kyle Field. Kyle Field's one of the greatest. Uh, I mean, I'd be willing to. Hear your list if you want to offer it, but of uh, uh, better stadiums to play. But the, the, if this is below the top five, I mean, uh, you're going to have to get another line of work because I mean, the, 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 it's not going to get better than this, you know. I remember a lady; she lived in San Luis Obispo, California. Lived there her whole life. She said, "I'm tired of getting. I, I can't wait to get out of this this little town. You know, this little hick town." Um, you know, because it's going to be so much bigger. You know, thought she was going to go to the big city. Thought she was going to go somewhere more scenic. Thing, hey, look, it doesn't get much better in San Luis Obispo, California. So it's it's a little bit like Kyle Field Stadium environment-wise. You know, this is, hey, I'd like to get better in Texas A&M. Good luck with that as far as uh, game day environment. You know, Coach McAfold is not only leading your team, but is among the best receivers in the Southeastern Conference. What has made him so successful in this offense? Uh, he's a polished guy. He was a polished receiver and route runner when he got here. Um, we were very lucky to get him. We recruited him out of high school, Washington State. He told us no, uh, stayed close to home, and then uh, decided he wanted to catch more balls. And uh, knew that we'd thrown it a lot at Washington State, so he came with us here. But what he provides is a good example and a good sort of how-to as far as running routes and finding space and things like that. And I do think that the example that Mackay sets has helped elevate the other receivers around there because that's one thing. He and Jameer, for example, have both run a lot of routes. I mean, and you know, they're not the biggest, they're not the fastest, they're not the strongest, but you know, somewhere around junior high, they're having those passing leaks every day. And, you know, and I'd love to see, uh, uh, you know, the whole Southeast get uh, those seven-on-seven seven leaks going. And then I think uh, there'd be a ton of receivers in there because we have really talented guys. We have really fast guys. I think you'd have a lot more polished guys. And I think it would, you know, I, that it may be the greatest receiver place uh, in the country if they did that, you know. Uh, you know, like... Uh, a number of the Aggies players, you know, they played seven on seven all their life, you know, and uh, yeah, they kind of look like it too. Some of them when they catch the ball. 
Coach, you went over to the defense right before that final possession. What was your message to them? What did you say to them? And, and how big was that play by Pick Team? So, went to the defense and what happened then? Uh, what, what was your message to them before that final possession on, on defense and uh, and then the play by Pickering? How, how huge was that? Just try to keep it simple. You know, I think you get in these exciting, <clears throat> these uh, intense emotional games and the guys will try to make more out of it than there is. And uh, I got something in my throat. But. Um, they'll try to make more out of it than there than it is, and uh, you know if you can settle everybody down and they just take it kind of one play at a time. I mean I know that's easier said than done, but just kind of unify the group attention and focus a little bit. I think it helps you, you know, just do routine basic things instead of a bunch of people running around frantically. Did your team do a better job not overthinking today? I think that, you know, yeah, so we did definitely did a better job of not overthinking. We did our share of it. It was an improvement. We're not there yet. Uh, you know, and I don't know if you ever get there, but we over well, we overthought less this game than we have any that I can think of since I've been here, perhaps. What did you like best about what your team did to not um, to win this game? Played together. Played together. Hung in there. Didn't. Um, you know, uh, struggle with the emotional ups and downs, you know, bounce back, responded quickly. Coach, uh, special teams issues kind of happened again this week, and you won the ball game, but what are your concerns at this point in three straight weeks? Is it a matter of depth at this point, or how would you kind of describe the fact that you're having these issues in special teams? I don't, you know, I think we just got to work through it, um, you know. Uh, I'd have to see the film. I mean, a lot of that happened quite quickly. Um, you know, we, if we can kick the ball through the uprights of practice, we've got to be able to do it during the game because same uprights, same everything. Um, uh, I don't know. We, I just have to see it on film. I mean, there were some penalties, so I don't know uh, what that looked like. You guys uh, see it before I do, and you have a TV set sometimes. Uh, I don't know. I thought we should have kicked it in the end zone one time. We didn't. I don't uh, Gosh, I can't remember all of them, to be honest with you. Uh, punted it pretty good once or twice. That one guy punted it a mile. Yeah. Coming into this game, back-to-back -back losses, I mean, do you think there was a little extra motivation to, to get a win going into the bye week? Yeah, maybe. I felt like we should have won those last two games too. And you know, and and to be honest with you, play, yeah, even though I didn't think we play as well as we can, I thought we played well enough to win. We just didn't win, you know. <coughs> was the, t the the two minute drill before halftime? Was was that about as best as you've seen this offense click five plays in the five yards? Well, the last part of the sentence, it'll click what? Was that the best you've seen in the offense maybe click this season? It was five plays, seven five yards in the first I don't know. We've been doing some of that in the fourth quarter. I guess it was in the second quarter. It was the best. Oh, hey, how you doing? Congratulations. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. Coming in here and win is a big deal. The last time you were here, you won it on the last play. Yeah, I'm glad you weren't coaching to, to, to heck. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we get we got gotten four of them. They're tricky. Yeah, they make it tricky here. They're they're they're, they're loud and enthusiastic. Well, y'all hung in there. Y'all did quite well. Well, I appreciate you. I I figured you were going to be in uh, Wimberley doing some fun stuff. Well, I had to come here. <laughs> well, I got yeah. You did have the double whammy, didn't you? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll see you when. You yeah, I'll see you in a sec. Um. <clears throat> Uh, I thought I thought it was the best. I mean, we've done some stuff like that the, the fourth quarter, but we hadn't the second the second quarter, which is pretty important too. <clears throat> and I do think it was kind of a momentum shift, which was good going into half halftime. Was it kind of surprised that they ran man to man single high safety on the two post touchdowns? I mean, it seemed like Will Rogers was obviously pretty well against the man to man. Well, they uh, we moved it pretty well up and down the field in zone, and then. So it was kind of the changeup, and that's kind of what they like to do some in uh, the red zone. Yeah, thank you. Last one, Ryan. 
you've talked so much just about this being a repetition-based offense. Why do you feel Makai Polk has been able to step in so quick and in his first season make this type of impact? I think just what you said. He's had a lot of reps. Uh, I don't know. Uh, other than maybe Jameer, he's had more reps running routes and catching balls, uh, you know, than anybody else on the team. I mean, you, you know, it didn't just start uh, when he got here, like in the off season, nothing like that. It started somewhere around seventh, eighth grade, as they have all those passing leagues, uh, which go year round, and you know, and uh, and uh, catching balls year round, year after year. I don't know how many thousands more balls, thousands. And uh, um, and I think this would be a very conservative number, but let's say uh, then the average uh, guy, they've cut 3,000 more balls. Let's say just the average guy, they've cut 3,000 more. Well, I think there's a huge value to that. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, so yeah, anybody that wants to get to, uh, Passing leagues going in Mississippi. You'll have all the help I can offer. Uh, anyway, thanks. Thanks, Coach. Thank